He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. It is episode 117 today. I am coming to you live and in color from Narragansett, Rhode Island. The weather's been absolutely spectacular, but uh, I understand we're in for some severe thunderstorms tomorrow and uh, Friday, but that's okay. Uh, a little rain is not, uh, not unwelcome around here, for sure. Uh, the Gadget Professor comes out every Thursday night, and we'd like to welcome everybody. If you're new to the Gadget Professor, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. We are now heard in 165 countries around the world, so uh, I can't figure that out, but I'm uh, delighted that people are watching the show. If you're old to the show and coming back, thank you again. I appreciate your viewership very much. Uh, this is a family-safe uh, program. We are part of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And uh, it is totally family safe, so you can always uh, have your kids listen into the Gadget Professor or your children, and uh, you won't hear any foul wor words uh, coming out of the Gadget Professor's mouth. So uh, let's uh, open up the show a little bit with uh, an introduction as to how to get into the Gadget Professor. If you're watching me, I guess you figured it out. But if you're new, there's several ways that you can watch the Gadget Professor show. And probably the easiest way is just go to our website, and that would be at thegadgetprofessor.com. That would be thegadgetprofessor.com. And when you get on that page, there's a little brown box. If you uh, scurry down to like the fifth one, it says the Gadget Professor. If you click on that, and if you have uh, you know the iPod, the iPad, this is an old one, but it still works. Uh, pretty much anything that takes an RSS feed, you'll automatically subscribe by clicking that button to the Gadget Professor Show, and every Thursday evening, as soon as it's posted, uh, you will automatically get it downloaded. Also, when you're on the Gadget Professor's page, scroll down here right before the actual video itself, and right here you'll see a, uh, a word that says newsletter. You really want to subscribe to the newsletter for a variety of reasons, as I tell everybody. Uh, every Thursday night, as soon as it's posted, as soon as the show goes up, you'll get the newsletter sent to your inbox and your email. And that uh, is a synopsis of all the URLs, all the things that we talk about in each show, and they're all hot links. So you don't have to worry about uh, writing everything down with the Gadget Professor. Just subscribe to the notes and you'll get everything automatically. And certainly if you're listening to the audio track only on the uh, Gadget Professor, which people can do, there's a place down here, uh, again, uh, uh, right below the uh, video portion that says uh, uh, audio and uh, you click on that and you'll just get the audio portion but it's much better watching the video for sure so I hope you, that you will uh, that you will tune in also uh, the gadget professor has a uh, Facebook page and that would be facebook.com forward slash the gadget professor and you can email me at any point in time 24 hours a day seven days a week at the gadget professor at gmail.com that would be the gadget professor at gmail.com I get a lot of email about a lot of things they could be technical in nature they could be a, a gadget review and by the way if you have a gadget out there uh, that you want me to take a look at just email me or if you manufacture or know of a gadget that you'd like me to review just uh, drop me a line at the gadget professor at gmail.com and I will be more than happy to uh, see what we can do for you and of course last but not least my favorite page would be rebel mouse slash forward slash the gadget professor uh, what this does is we tweet all the time uh, I have a couple people that actually help me send out the tweets so uh, this page uh, rebel mouse forward slash gadget professor actually takes all those tweets and gives you a visualization of what's going on so uh, what you're gonna find is the absolute latest gadget in news uh, that's coming out literally by the hour. You can go back to this page once an hour, once a half hour, and everything will change. And if you see a gadget or an article that you like, you just click on it and you get the whole story right there. So I love Rebel Mouse, and I think that you'll like it too, so you want to check into that. Now this week, we have a lot of gadgets. I think I have two gadgets to show you, and some news and some information that I think you'll want to know. Uh, now with regards to information, 
I keep alluding to some big announcement, and uh, I'm almost ready to announce it. There's a couple things that are going on behind the scenes at the Gadget Professor that are very, very exciting. But uh, one of the things that we're going to probably start doing in September is streaming this show live. Now, we actually have a live stream, we have Ustream, and we have another streaming account. So uh, I'll send you more information if you subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, you'll be hearing more about this. Where we're actually going to do the uh, Gadget Professor broadcast live where you actually can uh, write in questions or comments, and we'll be able to monitor that live while we're on uh, while we're doing the broadcast and uh, we're toying around with doing a pre-broadcast which uh, will only be for certain viewers and we'll talk about that way later but you'll be able to actually tune in see me setting up everything behind the scenes and uh, see what goes on in the studio now obviously I'm not in the studio today as I said I'm in Narragansett and uh, our big studio is in Scottsdale Arizona and I'll be heading back there probably in a I don't know, two or three more, probably three weeks, sometime early September, I'll be heading back to the big studio. So we got a lot of fun things going on there, and I think you'll enjoy that. So let's get started with the show. The first uh, thing I'm going to talk about, I do not have one, I do not own one of these, but uh, it is a phenomenal product. I'm going to try to get one in to uh, show it live, but I don't have one now, but I do know people that have used this. This is called Presto Printing Mailbox and Presto Mail Server. And essentially what this is, is it's a printer. And if you have someone that is totally computer illiterate or does not want to bother with a computer, but yet wants to receive email and photographs from friends and family, this is probably the best device out there to do that. Essentially what you're going to do is plug this printer into the wall and plug it into a phone jack. And this will provide you with an email. It might be John Doe at PrestoMailServer.com, whatever the, the, inter, the email address is that they provide you with. Uh, you give this to your friends or your family or anybody that you want to receive email from, even photographs from your cell phones, your smartphones. And what you do is you put their email address in and you send it. And at whatever time you set this device to, it will print everything down, and you'll be able to see the pictures, the email, the whole bit. Now, it's not a computer, so you can't type an answer back, but it's primarily for receiving. And uh, the Presto Printer Mailbox is quality design and manufactured by HP. We've all heard of them. It's specially designed to be easy to be used by those who are technically shy. Uh, it includes an HP 95 tricolor, so it's in color cartridge starter paper pack, and a 25-foot phone cord, one-year hardware warranty, and a 60-day totally risk-free money-back guarantee. The Presto Mail service is a subscription service, and you've got to kind of dig for that. I went right to the page, so that's $15.80. bucks and eighty fifteen bucks and eighty dollars, fifteen dollars and eighty cents a month for the service, and the printer is a hundred bucks. So, right up front, they're going to tell you that. They have other plans, uh, and a service plan also available for $18.99. I don't know if you need that, but you can check all that out. You're not going to get spam. You're not going to get any junk mail because they don't have your email address. Uh, there's no checking for emails. Messages are automatically printed. Email is transformed into beautifully formatted e-letters and printed in color. Attached digital photos and PDF documents are also, uh, you're also able to email those. You can send from any email program, email-capable cell phones or PDAs, and you can get free articles, puzzles, and games available from major publishers and authors, more than 30 colorful templates. Turn your email into greeting cards, calendars, and e-letters. So it's, it's a very interesting device. It's sold on Amazon, Best Buy. Uh, sells it, and it's 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 kind of a, an interesting device, especially for those people who are computer shy, but yet they want to stay in touch with the family. So you can check that out. Uh, they have a brochure that you can uh, basically download for free, and uh, as I said, it's ninety nine bucks, and they have a about a six, eight, six, fifteen dollars and eighty cents a month service fee to to keep you subscribed. But uh, this gives you the whole layout and pretty much step by step. It's as easy as one, two, three. Send in email, email photos and other documents to a Presto provided email address you set up for your loved ones. Number two, the Presto service transform messages and photos into beautiful color Presto mail. Three, Presto mail is retrieved um, via the phone line and automatically printed out up to five times a day. So it's 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 a pretty cool device. All right, moving right along. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about EIFX. I'm just try it again. EXIF, which I call EXIF. And you're wondering, what am I talking about? 
Well, EXIF stands for the Inter Interchangeable Image File Format, and it's abbreviated EXIF. And by the way, it's E small XIF, and they get very picky about putting it all in caps. I don't know why. But this is the standard specification uh, that specifies the format for all camera images, all digital camera images uh, and sound. Uh, and ancillary tags used by digital cameras, including smartphones. So your smartphone, every time it takes a, a photograph, I don't care what kind of smartphone you have, inside that digital file, you have an EXIF file, E-X-I-F. Now, this is important, and I'm talking about security here and things that you probably don't even know exist, but in this day and age, you need to know that. So the EXIF file is automatically generated by pretty much any digital camera today, and actually your scanners uh, uh, put a, an EXIF file, include that in the digital image. Other systems, uh, let's see, it will do sound files also that are recorded by uh, digital cameras and video files. The specifications uses the following formats with the addition of specific meta tags. Meta tags is essentially the information that's contained in this EXIF file, which we'll, we're going to take a quick look at. So if you really want to get into what this means and, and how you can protect yourself, uh, you'll want to just look this up. This is Wikipedia. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a photograph that I actually took yesterday. This is a, a photograph I took in Newport, Rhode Island. It's a very pretty place. And that's essentially the picture that you're seeing. But now uh, if I go into the program and just click on the EXIF data, that's E-X-I-F, which is over here, anybody can do this. So if you send this picture or post this picture, this meta file, this EXIF file, is automatically included within that photo. So what's the big deal? You know, what, Why would you care? Well, you'd care because it contains some very, eh, sometimes personal information that you don't know you're sending out. Now, you're wondering, what am I talking about? Well, let's just take a look. Uh, here's the picture. You can see that. And here's the information. I shot this. The shutter speed is telling me this is in the EXIF file at 1 50th of a second. My f-stop number was f, uh, one, uh, a quarter of a, uh, f4. Let's try it again, f14. The ISO it was set to 100. It tells me my equalization level. My, my focal length of the lens was 11 millimeters. I used a wide angle lens for this. Uh, the flash was off. The exposure was aperture priority. Uh, the meter mo the meter metering mode that I was in was uh, a pattern mode. This is all useless information but important to the photographer or professional photographers who want to see what you did in the photo. Uh, I used a Nikon camera. The model was a, a Nikon D70. Uh, the lens model was 11 to 16, wide-angle lens, f2.8, very technical information, blah, blah, blah. But here's the part you probably don't know you're sending out. This has the date and the original time that this photograph was shot. So it says 8-5-2013. Uh, actually, I was there two days ago. But it tells the actual date and time that I took the photograph. So essentially, if I'm here in Newport, you know that I'm not at my house at that particular time because here I am taking the photograph or someone's borrowing my camera. But the other thing that this puts out, this file, and I don't have it on here for a reason, is your GPS information. It actually gives you the latitude, uh, reference, the longitude, and you can actually pinpoint very precisely where this photo was taken and again uh, if you don't want if you're away on vacation for a long time and your house isn't protected and you're posting these photos on Facebook or wherever you don't know who's looking at them but just by a simple click of a button they can look at this EXIF information and find out uh, a lot of stuff that you don't even know probably you're putting out so what do you do how do you take care of that well one of the first things you do is I intentionally turn off my GPS which as you can see if you can see this on the screen it's all blank if I were to turn the GPS on on my camera, uh, that would allow that information to be recorded. Now, once something's recorded in the EXIF file, many programs, many software programs, allow you or give you the ability to go in and strip all of that information out or a piece of that information out. And this brings me to the next uh, file that I want to talk ab about. It's called XN View, uh, put out by XN View Company. This is a totally free, it's awesome software for reading, viewing, and processing all your images. And what this software will do, it's totally free, is allow you to strip out in a batch mode all of the EXIF information if you don't want to send it at all. 
uh, you can run it through this program and it will also allow you to process your images, increase the brightness, the darkness, the, the colors, so on and so forth. But at least now you're aware of what this EXIF file holds in the meta tags. Uh, there's also another one called um, PixelGuardy. And uh, why use PixelGuardy? All smartphones have GPSs, as we just said, because of enhanced 911. That's why there's GPSs in that. But smartphones and many newer cameras add GPS data, which, we're gonna, which is the EXIF data. Uh, essentially, and it's called geotagging. So if a camera has geotagging and you're wondering what it is, it's actually providing the latitude and longitude of where you have taken these photographs embedded right in the digital file of that photo as an EXIF file. So this will do it with the uh, video and photos and sound on your little cameras. Geotags and other provide hidden data that gets saved into the EXIF file uh, as metadata, which is what the EXIF file is, and goes to the content wherever you share it online. Metadata plays an important role in telling what, when, where, and how you caught this digital content. Metadata is essentially for organizing and discovering digital files, especially online, but it can create embarrassment or harm if you don't manage. In fact, just knowing uh, about metadata means you know something more than most people do. Uh, it's also a great way to organize your tool, blah, blah, blah. Essentially, why you'd want this program is to alter that data or strip it off. So enough said, and uh, I think it's a good mini-education uh, about things that you probably didn't know about. Okay. Rolling or crawling right along. I don't know what it is today. But uh, we have Open Culture. This is a great site. This site offers you free online courses, free certification courses, free movies, free audiobooks, free ebooks, free textbooks, free language lessons, free business courses, free kids' education, great science videos, smart YouTube channels, intelligent video sites, life changing books, all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's different courses you can take here, so I highly recommend that you take a look at this. Uh, if you're going to be traveling and want to get some books uh, or want to increase your knowledge on pretty much almost any subject that there is out there, very cool site, open culture, totally free. Rolling right along, a little piece of news here. YouTube just expanded its live streaming to channels. If you have a YouTube channel and you're putting up videos, and you can actually tune into the Gadget Professor. If you go Don Bain on YouTube, you will find all the, uh, the episodes uh, from the Gadget Professor are posted on there, and I post it weekly on YouTube. If you have 100 users or more, YouTube is now going to allow you to stream live whatever it is that you like. So that's kind of a, a big thing in our industry, and uh, I think we'll be hearing a lot more. And I suspect that uh, this used to be a 1,000 subscribers. Now it's 100 subscribers, and I bet you pretty soon it will be 50 subscribers, and then I'll bet you it's just going to be opened up to the public, which is uh, very interesting. And again, streaming live is essentially right now I'm broadcasting uh, live from Narragansett, Rhode Island, the Gadget Professor show, but it's actually being digitally recorded. When I finish with this, I'll click a couple buttons and I'll actually post it to my RSS feed and to my blog, which will allow you to watch it. I can also stream this show live, which means if I were to tweet to you or email to you and say, hey, uh, it's 7 o'clock or whatever time it is, the Gadget Professor is getting ready to go on the air, you could tune in and watch me live, get ready, as I said, and then actually watch the show live. But uh, we will do that at some point in time. It looks like a lot of fun and uh, interesting news for sure. The next uh, free app that we're going to talk about is, have you ever posted photographs on Facebook and uh, have albums and, you know, of you or your friends and you want to download them? Well, this downloader uh, called FB Downloader, Facebook Downloader, is totally free. And it's basically a utility that you put on your computer. You log into your uh, Facebook site and you'll download instantly all your photos that you have so that's that's a pretty cool thing no hacking no virus no spyware back up all your Facebook photo albums get all your tagged photos we know what tag means now right uh, and download your your friends albums download in color or black and white so this is a free app and uh, check it out we also have a website here, and this is a cool website. It's called About Me, About.me. It's all about you. Uh, about Me makes it easy for people to find and learn about you. And you can also put this up. This will also go up on Facebook and Twitter. What is it? It's a free piece of software that you could use, and it will create a free web page for you. 
and it's just about you. You can you would put your name, your 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 occupation, what you do, what you like, all kinds of things. It makes beautiful web pages. It's totally free. You can put a free business card up. You can put your i. You can, it's an iPhone app, and you can put your email up. And uh, you can build an online presence. It's a great place to start or improve your presence on the web. Your public ID online. Visitors don't have to sign up to see any of your information because it's there. If you want to do it, it's free. You can market your business, drive awareness to your business with a beautiful page. There's no charge involved. It helps in a job search. It's a personal home page. No need to know about code. You can easily build your own site in about two minutes. And kind of nice and the quality is uh, very very cool very very nice so, so that's about dot me and uh, you want to check that out now ladies and gentlemen we're gonna get to uh, one of the gadgets of the day I do have two uh, this is a very easy gadget and the reason I'm bringing it up is because uh, you know Narragansett Rhode Island is uh, right on the ocean of course it's actually at the tip of Rhode Island if you look at the map we're at the very tip of Rhode Island and uh, if you want to go to Block Island, you have to go to uh, Narragansett, Rhode Island, and go to the uh, uh, little spot of Galilee, and that's where the Block Island ferry leaves to take you over to Block Island. And uh, Gadget Professor does not like the beach, but the Gadget Professor's wife loves the beach. Henceforth, I go to the beach uh, when I feel like I have to go to the beach with my wife, otherwise she gets angry with me. So, uh, that said, one of the reasons I hate the beach, believe it or not, is I hate sand. Because sand gets into everything, and I bring my, you know, my smartphone, and I bring my tablet, and that's a whole nother story. Uh, I have a Nexus 7 tablet, and it's useless at the beach. It's so bright, I can't see it. And yes, I've turned the brightness all the way up, but I can't use it because I can't see it. Now, if you have a Kindle, those you can read, those you can see, but I'm having a hard time seeing even my smartphone, even my, my, my Droid X. Uh, it's tough to see. Anyway. Uh, when I go to the beach, I always bring one of these, and this is called Koglin's Waterproof Pouch, and I've had these for about 10 years now, and I just said, you know what, i got to tell my fans, this is the coolest thing. Essentially, it's a waterproof pouch. No, you're not going to put it on your bathing suit and go in the water with it, but this will keep the sand and the debris uh, the debris, the, you know, the sand, the, the, the junk that's floating in the air, and water off your, your gear. So essentially this has a really nice Velcro lip on it. And it's kind of weird to open it up. You have to pull it apart on the top, and this opens up. And essentially what you're going to do is if you have your, you know, your electronics, you're going to throw it in there like, like so. And uh, these come in different sizes, as you'll see. And this is the bag. Now, what's nice is the way this closes is it folds, and the Velcro strip actually locks it. So you fold it once like this, and then it folds again. And I don't know if you can see this. It's a double lip. And then the Velcro locks this really tight. So the stuff's not going to slip out. And a uh, little string here. And... What it says is caution. These bags were not designed or intended for submerged use. They are intended to keep gear dry in conditions such as rain, heavy dews, spray, splashing. Properly closed, it will keep out water in a quick immersion. So if it should fall in the water uh, for a couple seconds or so, maybe a minute, I haven't done a test, but it will keep things dry. Do not store electrical, photographic, or optical equipment in these bags as damage to these items could result. Obviously, if you get these things wet, they're going to break. So, uh, that said, these bags are very handy. The plastic is very high quality. I'm sure I've had these for at least six or seven years, and I use them all the time. They're excellent. Anywhere you want to keep moisture out, uh, they come in different sizes. And where do you buy them? If you go to Amazon, which is the easiest place to buy them, uh, it's a prime item. If you go for nine dollars and eighteen cents, you're going to get three three different sizes of these bags. And uh, I know you will find these very handy, especially if you have kids. It's a great way to put their stuff in it. And I, when I go to the beach, I always have one of these. And the thing I like about it is, uh, not only does it keep things clean and safe, but I actually, if the phone rings, I actually could push the buttons through the plastic and. You know, it's going to be hard to talk to them, but for that I would use my Bluetooth headset. So, uh, I would, uh, sorry about that, I would check these out because you're going to find them, uh, 
quite handy. So that's gadget number one. Now, uh, gadget number two, again, is something that I've had for a long while, probably 10 years, and these are in the process of being discontinued. And what I mean by the process is you can still buy these, and they're starting to drop the price. And this is a Sony MDR NC11 noise canceling headphone. So essentially what this consists of is a mini jack. Obviously you'd plug that into the audio out. A little control surface here which I'll talk about in a minute. And of course the uh, ends of it are two, two very comfortable uh, earbuds that, that would go in your ear. Now uh, on the control panel itself uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's an on and off button here. I will turn this on. I hope you can see the red light that's on, that's off, but a red light lights up. And then on the side here, there's a volume control that you can turn up or down. These are so good, they sound so good, that I actually use these on the plane. And uh, they work well. No, they're not a Bose headset, and they're not going to give you that full comfort, you know, around the ear that uh, these buds do. But I will tell you... Uh, the noise of the motor of the plane is significantly canceled out to the point where I find these much more comfortable and as I said I've been using these for many 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 years it does take a battery and the battery couldn't be any simpler there's a little compartment here you just slide that up and these will take one little uh, AAA battery that slides up like that and uh, you know there, there's the battery right there Batteries last quite some time, days. Certainly will last you coast to coast with no problem. But uh, essentially when you turn them on and turn the on switch on, uh, everything just gets like padded quiet. And uh, as I said, even the engine of the plane is, is, is significantly muted. I use these uh, all the time, and uh, I can just throw them in my pocket. They've got a neat little clip here. And uh, you could still get them. Uh, Amazon is selling them for $109, and uh, I see here where uh, the Sony site was selling them for $150, bucks. but anywhere you look, you'll find these M MDR NC11 noise-canceling headphones get fantastic reviews, and I have to attest to the fact that uh, they're really good. Now, right now, they say they only have uh, two left in stock, but again, if you Google around for this, uh, you will find them, and they're probably going to drop significantly in price. So if you could pick a pair up, 100 bucks, 109 bucks is a lot of money to pay for, for headsets. I wouldn't recommend them if I wasn't real thrilled with them. And uh, I have not checked with Sony to see if there's a newer model out, but if there is, I'm sure it costs more money. So uh, there we have it, folks. We have two gadgets in one Gadget Professor episode, lots of free software. I hope that you enjoyed yourself today. I will see everybody next week on The Gadget Professor. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor.